have to get counted. We are sitting on the shoulder of many people that fought for our voting ability. Please go vote for the governor's race, Stacey Abrams. Let's go. It's so important that we vote because we need black people to stay where they at and keep running it. And Stacey Abrams is super smart. When she speaks, it's believable. She's intelligent. And when I sit next to her, I feel like I learned so much. So we need a leader like her. From my mouth to your ears, honey, please get out and vote, honey. We definitely need each and every individual vote. People thought that your vote didn't count. Like they say, if your vote didn't count, honey, why in the hell they suppressed your vote? If you look at the early voting, especially here in Georgia, Stacey Abrams and Brian Kemp are literally head to head. We can tip the scale. Don't let rain, coal, or anything stop you from what our ancestors did to give us the opportunity to be here. What's up, YouTube? I know a lot of people have felt really beat down this year because of all the things that have been going on in politics. It's just grinds you down and it's worn you down to the point you don't feel like voting matters and you don't want to vote. This video is dedicated to getting you back out there and keeping hope alive to go vote, no matter how bad you feel, no matter how beat down you might be right now over the things you've seen in politics. Voting still matters. And if you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to this channel. Click that notification bell so you're down every time I drop life gain videos. These videos are designed to help you make gains in every area of your life. And voting is a big game. So let's jump into the video right now. Rawr. Rawr. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the mask I used Halloween to scare the one damn trick-or-treater that came to my door. Now, if you need any examples, of things that have happened in America that should scare you into getting in the voting line. Let's recap what's happened over the last two years. Here are five top policy changes that you'll notice from your kitchen table. Number one, the tax bill. This is a giant piece of legislation. It's the largest tax cut in the history of our country. It cuts taxes for corporations and the very rich. Believe me. Belief. This is not good for me. But if you're in the middle or lower class, it's a little more ambiguous. You might get a small tax cut over the next few years, but all middle class tax cuts end in 2025. Number two, Obamacare. While Trump and his allies failed to push through a total repeal of Obamacare in Congress, they have been chipping away at it along the edges. For example, Trump scrapped the federal subsidies for health insurance companies, which were used to lower out-of-pocket costs for low-income people. He also ordered sweeping changes in the nation's insurance system, allowing sales of cheaper policies with fewer benefits and fewer protections. That unravels a whole lot of what Obamacare is as a law. And depending on where you live, that means bracing yourself for soaring insurance premiums next year. Number three, immigration. On the campaign trail, Trump promised a border wall. He hasn't done that. But he has overseen an explosion in deportations. Immigration officials have arrested 25% more people this year than last year. And in December, the Supreme Court approved the third version of Trump's embattled travel ban. His anti-immigration rhetoric has also just changed the way a lot of us think of America. According to the FBI, hate crimes in the U.S. rose 10% between 2014 and 2016. And in late November, Trump himself retweeted three videos supposedly showing Muslims committing acts of violence. The videos had been posted by an anti-Islam organization, a hate group in the United Kingdom. To drive Islam out of this country forever! Number four, overtime. Trump's Justice Department ended an Obama-era expansion of the federal overtime rule. That means that about 4 million Americans who currently make low incomes will no longer be eligible for time and a half once they work more than 40 hours a week. Number five, the environment. Under Trump, the EPA has dismantled dozens and dozens of Obama-era rules, reducing the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. It's also rescinded a rule designed to protect lakes, ponds, and streams. It's reopened the Arctic to drilling. It's cleared the way for Keystone XL pipeline. It's shrunk national monuments. It's allowed coal mining on public lands. We could go on. 
the problem with all this stuff, with environmental laws and regulations, is that it's really hard to measure what that means for us right now. They're designed in the long-term interests of the country and the earth. After seeing those graphics, are you tired and ready to go vote yet? I know a lot of you have so many excuses for why you feel like voting is not effective. It don't, I can hear it right now. It doesn't matter who you vote for. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. It doesn't matter who's in leadership. They're going to do what they want to do anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't have that discussion unless you at least try to vote. Here's a very disturbing graphic. And a reason why a lot of things that are happening in our country have been happening because of this. Of people voting age 18 to 29 in America, only one third of those people plan to vote. Barack Obama said it best. If you're a young person, would you let your grandma pick the video game that you want to play today? Essentially young people by not getting out there and voting. You're letting the old people shape and mold the policies that are going to affect you for years to come. Their old asses is about to kick the bucket soon. Why allow them to shape all the policies that you're going to have to live with for 50 years? If you can stand in line to go to the club for an hour, if you can stand in line for hours to get some damn Air Jordans, you can stand in a line and vote. And if you go early vote, you don't have to stand in line in most cases. I don't know how much more we can say to tell you that it is important to vote. We're living in a time where truth, knowledge, and logic has been skewed by little things that are a little untrue in the news and other places. It is very important that you get out there to vote. People have died for you to go vote so that you can have America take some shape in the way you want it to be. Now granted, I'm a person who believes we don't need money in politics at all. And the reason I say that is because by you, by us allowing money to influence politics in the way that it's done, the average person who's not rich, who doesn't have the money to control politicians, your vote does not weigh as much as the rich person who's paying for a politician to get in the office. I agree with that. But what you should be considering is that the overwhelming amount of Americans voting are somewhere within that middle class range and we need to start voting for policies to uplift that area. And you getting out to vote does that. So I just want to make a video today to show the importance of why you need to vote. Tomorrow is election day in America. You wanna see some things change. If you want this country to be more about hope and less about fear, more about keeping diversity, more about going forward with ingenuity. You need to get out there and vote. And that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video, comment and subscribe. Go get yourself a life game. But more importantly, go get that life game and vote. No matter what your excuses are, no matter how you feel, taking the time to go vote allows you to get into the American political game and at least you can say that you did everything you could do within reason to try to shape the outcome. Because if you don't vote, you can't say shit. And until the next Sex is Hell video, I'll see you.